Many thanks to Daisy Podcast, Pandemonium, Lion Loss, and Wolves of Daisy for making this video possible. Daisy 1.19 is added a bunker that contains some of the best loot you can get your hands on and is stolen loot from other areas of the map to create some kind of underground dark tier 4 area. So in this video we're going to go over the two different ways to get the punched car, the sneaky alternative entrance into the bunker, how to gain access to all of the floors, and where you definitely shouldn't park your new Humvee. Mm. In order to even get inside the bunker, you will need what's called the punched card, which will lose one quality level each time you use it to enter the bunker. This punched card is found in two possible locations, with the first being static gas zones, five punched cards spawn per vanilla server, so finding one of these inside a static gas zone won't be difficult, but finding a gas mask and NBC gear to not die inside the gas might be. In this patch, the amount of gas masks that spawn has been increased by 40%, with the NBC mask being the best bet because it spawns in the same locations that you're going to be trying to find the yellow NBC gear, which is the firefighter and medical locations. Alternatively, the GP5 Giga Corona mask is found in tier 3 military locations, but the combat mask, the best mask, is now assigned the underground bunker loot tag only, along with a lot of other loot on Livonia, which we'll talk about later. Once you get your gear, head to the airfield in the north, which now has loads of medical tents as a 1.19, allowing me to find my card on the first attempt on a fresh server. Alternatively, Radanen is another static gas zone on the map, and like I said, it shouldn't be too difficult for one to spawn, but finding such a small item may prove difficult. The other method to get a punched card is to find one of the newly added military convoy dynamic events which works a lot like heli crashes do, found in these 14 locations on Livonia. If you're lucky and one of these military convoys spawn, a new infected spawns there called the Convoy Officer, distinctive for the hip holster that he flexes on us. In 1.19 this hip holster cannot be looted, but the punched card has a 100% chance to be inside his inventory when he dies. Now that you have the punched card, you can make your way to the southwest of Livonia near Danbog here on the map. Keep your card protected as it won't work if it's ruined, and don't accidentally use it as kindling in a fire. These cards will be highly sought after. The main entrance to the bunker is down the hill and will alert players with sound that can travel up to around 300 meters away and the red light that flashes goes up to the maximum viewing distance. This door will also stay open for 5 minutes which cannot be closed, only opened from the inside, closing on its own after those 5 minutes and again making a lot of noise and a lot of flashy red lights. An alternative, sneakier entrance is found in the Danbog Tower with the card reader being at the very top of the tower and the door being down here. This door makes a lot less noise and has no flashing lights so it's a sneaky way to enter the bunker and closes just after 10 seconds. Which is the main problem of this door, you need to have at least two people to enter this door because you need one person to activate the card reader and one person to go inside and then open the door for the person that activated the card reader. I did try to do this solo and you can see the results here. As an FYI, these switches don't require the card, so if someone is always inside the bunker and they can open it for you, you will never need the card, but you will always need a light source or night vision inside here. There's no way to turn on the lights. Regardless of which entrance you use, you will get to floor 1 as you enter, marked on the wall here, offering loot found in tier 1 military areas. To make it to floor 2, find the door that has a staircase leading down, taking you to this room, turn the blue valve and the water will descend and allow you to climb down the ladder. Follow the pipe along to the first ladder and this will lead you to floor 2, so you don't need any help from anybody to get to floor 2 and this will be marked with 02 on the walls, which will spawn tier 2 military grade loot. Now listen very carefully to this part, there is no way to enter or exit floor 2 other than lowering the water and climbing this ladder. And this water level rises very very slowly on its own, so if you take too long in floor 2, you will get trapped here. And I now know why drowning was added in this patch, because if you get caught in one of these pipes when the water is too high, you will drown. If you successfully haven't drowned yourself and you want some better loot, head to floor 3 which has the best loot inside. So head back to this ladder, climb down into this pipe and follow the pipe into the next room which looks exactly like this one. But in this room the ladder is broken. The ladder is broken because you will need a squad mate to turn the red valve which is near the blue valve that you turned earlier and the red valve raises water. The blue valve lowers it, red raises. So while inside this pipe you will need your friend to turn the red valve and then you will go up to the top and you can climb the ladder onto floor 3. This is the only way to enter floor 3. After you've looted floor 3, get back into the water and have your squad mate turn the blue valve which will lower the water and allow you to go through the pipes and up the ladder to escape. 
As I said earlier, each floor has better loot, which is now dictated by a new loot tag called the Underground Loot Tag and by a loot tier system too. So Underground Loot and a tier system. So Floor 1 is Tier 1 Underground Loot, Floor 2 is Tier 2 Underground Loot, and Floor 3 is Tier 3 Underground Loot. However, some items are what looks to be guaranteed spawns, such as the AK-101 and the new Plate Carrier variant spawning in Tier 2 or Floor 2. And on the third floor, guaranteed spawning a tactical helmet with night vision attached, of which there were two right next to each other, and the awesome Org AX right next to that, which is also another guaranteed spawn here. Now I don't know much about these guaranteed loot spawns, it's not a new thing for DayZ, but I don't know much about it, as I can't imagine the Org AX spawning in this location 100% of the time, but who knows, that might be the case. We might be able to get tactical helmets with guaranteed night vision goggles on if we manage to make it to floor 3 of the bunker. That might be the reward. Whatever the case, a lot of the loot has been removed from the Livonia map and sent to the tier system of the underground bunker instead. So all of this loot here exclusively spawns inside the bunker, along with a lot of other general purpose military items, giving absolutely monstrous incentives to not only go to this bunker and loot it, but to also maintain control of it. Building a base inside the bunker is incredibly possible because you can build almost anywhere down here, block off entrances, block off small passages, create your own compound by sectioning off these different rooms that conveniently have the same width as a wall. This also allows you to not need a punch guard because someone in your squad can just log in and open the door for you. You can light up the bunker with generators and you can store the most valuable of your loot in the most inaccessible place of all places that has ever existed in Vanilla Daisy, which is floor free of the bunker. All of this while simultaneously being resupplied with ammo boxes full of the best ammo in the game and some of the best equipment possible to protect your characters outside of rare heli crash sites and the military trains. Also the Org AX is one of the best weapons in the game too. To put it simply, the addition of the bunker changes how Livonia is played. Loot progression hasn't just been given to Livonia, it's been given to the players. There's even a freaking secure parking space near the entrance, just don't leave your car parked near the automatic door. For those of you that I'm sure will ask, yes this bunker is only on Livonia, but modders do have assets to create their own bunkers, with modular parts of the bunker being available to modders to shape the bunkers how they wish. These bunkers can then be darkened with the dark areas potentially being placed anywhere on the map so we can have dark areas anywhere we want. And finally we were also given a keycard entry asset and a one way door asset too. Because of this, bunkers changed Daisy in more ways than I believe we all first imagined and I'm excited to see what the modders will do with the bunkers and these bunker assets. If you want to learn more about what was added in this patch, see this video. Thank you very much for watching and good luck in the bunker.